Good morning, Cyber Warriors. Pretty short video today, it's just going to be really quick. I'm going to be going over the get services command, how it could be useful for you as an administrator of the system, but also how you can enrich that information and make it better for you on your hunt mission. Let's get right to it. All right, so I've already run the get service command, and in here we see that uh, from a service administrator standpoint that there may be something wrong with this system. Uh, the WAU service or the Windows Update service is stopped. It's not running. So we probably want to investigate that and how and, and fix that problem. Um, but what I want to do is talk about using the get service command and enriching that to be able to help you with your hunt mission. In order to do that, we have to go out and reach out to different um, different commands to populate information, just like we did with the get net TCP service or net get net TCP connection. Um, we're going to enrich this uh, in the same manner, um, slightly differently, because we need to have uh, a little bit of additional information. One, we want to have the process ID, and we also want to have a path if there's a path available. So let's take a look at how to do that. Right? So we're going to do get service, but we need to look at what's available first. right? So we're going to push that to get member, and we're going to only look at where the member type equals property. Okay, so in here, we want to take a look at the things that are going to provide us additional information. So we want the status, we want the start type, uh, we probably want the display name so it provides additional context for us. So let's go ahead and push those into a variable that we can use. We're going to do that by doing the following. So let's get service. And we're going to select, let's do status, name, display name, and start type. Let's just take a look at that really quickly. Oof. Okay. So we probably want to change the order around. So let's actually change that to where we can see this information a little bit better. So we're going to move start type in front of display name. That's a little bit better. See how easy it is to just change the way things are viewed? Okay. So now we have the core of what we want to get after. Now we want to enrich this. We're going to enrich it by calling on something in get process, right? So we have name and we want to do, let's do the process ID, right? And what is the process ID called in get net TCP connection? So it was called what, right? Remember? owning process. So let's call it that. Okay. And then we're going to pull this from an expression. An expression is with the squiggly do and friends get process. We're looking for the name of uh, this particular field, which is going to be using the name because it'll be the same. So that'll be dollar sign underscore dot name. And then what we're pulling is the ID because that is what it's called in the pro get process. And then we do a pair of squiggly don'ts, which closes off, right? So this inner one matches this one and the outer one matches that one. So we always need to make sure that we have a squiggly don't or squiggly do. And another thing we want to do is almost exactly the same. And that is at name. Oop. 
squiggly do game equals, and this is going to be path. Same format, get process, with name, oh my goodness, and once again we're going to be calling this by name, but this time we're looking for the path information and a pair of squiggly dots. So let's just take a look at this really quickly check and we're going to let it run until we see in a path just to make sure that we have a path in there we didn't mess this all up do we see one yet nope nope still, nope all right, there we go there we are we definitely have a file path now we also see that there's an owning process that gives us a process id which is very useful okay so now that we know that this works we're going to push this into a variable so you hit the home key twice, and that gets us right to the beginning of our very first part of the line. And we can call this service results. Okay. Service results. Boom. We're going to do it. Let it do its thing. We're going to do a quick little coffee break. Three hours later. There we go. Okay, all right. Now, let's take a look at our service results. Oh, that's awesome. We've got the stuff that we need. All right, so let's filter our service results. What do we want to do? We want to look for things where there's a file path as part of the, uh, the thing that we need, right? So let's take a look at that. And we're going to push that and where the question is path match a colon. Why a colon? Because there's always a colon. So it'll be like C colon dollars, uh, you know, or backslash or D colon, or whatever. The beginning of it, it was always going to have a colon. We can see that by here. Now we have a whole bunch of results. Now we want to start whitelisting, filtering out things we don't want to look at. The low hanging fruit are things that are not from the Windows execution path. So let's get rid of those. We're going to take our old command. We're going to go back up and we're going to push that to path not match this time system 32 okay this pairs down the results considerably there's not a lot now okay and from here what we want to do is we want to check to make sure that there aren't anything running out of program data folders or the user folders those are low hanging fruit in this case, we have a whole bunch of stuff in the program files, and you should investigate the things that are in the program files directory. Are they authorized by your company's, uh, you know, allowed list? Uh, you know, what what if they're not supposed to have uh, Razor running because they're using some proprietary software, or they they plugged a keyboard that probably isn't authorized on that network or your system? So these are things to look at. Uh, so, just to refresh our my memories on that whole command right there, that's what that was. And what should you do with this? That's absolutely right. You should be putting this into your script uh, so that when you're running it, it gets all of that information and then you can operationalize it and work that as part of your own mission. Okay then, Cyber Warriors. What did we do today in today's video? We grabbed the get services command, we talked briefly about how it could be used uh, as just a system administrator, especially looking for services that should be running, especially the Windows Update service. 
And we also talked about leveraging and using it to enrich that information from other commands in order to facilitate your hunt mission, which is just as important, possibly even more important. So hopefully you learned something today. Happy hunting, and I'll see you in the next video.